Hello for you and welcome to the lesson you've been waiting for in this unit. We're going to talk about proving trig identities. So our goal today, I understand the basic trig identities and I can use them to prove more obscure trig identities. Uh, now I'm going to develop a couple more basic trig identities, um, show you where they come from, and I'm going to split this video up into two. So I'm going to develop those and then I'm going to stop and move on to record the second half of the video where I actually use those identities to prove something. Um, so that if you want to go back and look at what I do with the identities or you want to go back and look at what you do um, with where the, the basic ones came from, you can do that um, a little bit more easily. So here's our story so far. Here's the identities we have. Now this is one that you learned last year, the quotient identity. We know from the unit circle that tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta. And of course, uh, in addition to that, another quotient identity is the fact that cotan of theta equals cos over sine. Those two kind of go hand in hand. Now, also from the unit circle, uh, we figured out that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. Uh, if I rearrange this, I get two more. Uh, I get cos squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta. And if I rearrange it the other way, subtract cos squared theta on both sides, I get sine squared theta equals 1 minus cos squared theta. Now these are all basic identities that fall under the name Pythagorean identity and you have to remember what the names of these things are because when you prove uh, trig identities by using basic identities you have to actually name them so we know what you're dealing with. Now the reciprocal identities of course cosecant is 1 over sine and secant is 1 over cos and tan is 1 over cotan. Um, and sine is 1 over cosecant, and cos is 1 over secant, and cotan is 1 over tan. So these are just all of the reciprocal identities. Anytime you flip something over and make it something else, here's what they are. Now, compound angle formulas are, was from the uh, video yesterday. Um, I told you if you wanted the proof of these things or the development of these things to go and look in your textbook. Uh, I am, however, going to use them to develop a couple more uh, that we are going to use and they're going to be called basic trig identities as well that you're going to be able to use um, using the names that I give you um, to develop more complicated trig identities um, that don't actually have names because they are just that complicated. All right, so here's the um, the sine uh, cos and tan, or sine and cos compound angle formulas. Uh, we're going to develop a few more here, starting with the compound angle formula for tangent. So let's take a look. Um, we're going to use some of the things from the page before to develop the compound angle formula for tangent. So we know that the quotient identity for tan says that tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta. And it does not matter what that theta is, whether that theta is um, uh, just a number, whether that theta is x plus 3, we can replace this theta. As long as I replace all three thetas with the same thing, then um, then I have, then that identity holds. So with compound angle formulas, with the, I should erase that little thing in there, with the compound angle formulas, doo -doo 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 -doo, with the compound angle formulas, here's what we get. We get the tan of x plus y will equal the sine of x plus y over the cos of x plus y. But from our compound angle formulas, and the, this is using the quotient ID, so just in brackets over here I'm going to say this is the quotient identity that tells us this. I'm just subbing in x plus y there. Um, from the compound 
angle formulas that we learned yesterday, I can expand these out. So the sine of x plus y is going to be sine x cos y. And remember, sine has the same side, sine in there, so plus uh, cos x sine y. And cosine goes cos, cos, sine, sine, so we got cos, cos, sine, sine. And I'm going to put in my x and y, x and y. And it has the opposite sign, so I get a plus here, so I get a minus here. And that is from the compound, so I'm going to say compound angle formulas. So I'm just going to put in a little short form there to tell you what I'm using. Now, if I rewrite from the quotient identity, from the quotient identity, uh, we can write uh, that sine x equals cos x tan x. And before you say, whoa, that's not the quotient identity, well, let's take a look up at the quotient identity that we had here. If I want to get sine theta by itself, I multiply both sides by cos theta, and I get tan theta times cos theta, which is exactly what I have down here, except I've got x's instead of thetas. Okay. Um, so we're going to make a substitution. Everywhere I see a sine x, I'm going to replace it with cos x tan x. So making a substitution, making a substitution, we get tan x plus y equals, now I'm going from this thing here, everywhere I see a sine x, I'm going to replace it with cos x tan x. So this is going to be cos x tan x cos y plus, and I've got a, um, I've got a sine y here, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to replace sine y with cos y tan y. So we get plus cos x um, sine y tan y. And on the bottom, we have cos x cos y, which I'm going to uh, leave just like that. Cos x cos y. But here, I'm going to replace it with um, cos x tan x. Cos x tan x times cos y tan y. Now, this looks like I'm making a huge mess, but some things are going to simplify because if we take a look, uh, I can factor some stuff out of here. So taking a look here, I've got a cos x and I've got a cos x. And so I'm going to take, and I've also got a cos y and, oh, I screwed up there. I shouldn't have had a sign. That should say cos y because it's cos y tan y that I replaced the sine y with. So I'm going to pull out the um, cos x cos y and cos x cos y. So I pull out cos x cos y as a common factor. And when I pull that out of here, I'm left with simply tan x. And when I divide this by cos x cos y, I'm simply left with plus tan y. Now on the bottom, look, I can do the same thing. Here's a cos x cos y that I can take out. And I've got a cos x and a cos y in this big long string of multiplication too. So I'm taking out cos x cos y. And I'm going to be left with 1, because if I divide this by itself, I'm left with 1. Subtract, and we're dividing out the cos x and the cos y, so I'm left with tan x tan y. Tan x tan y. 
these two things are going to divide to 1. So this is simply tan x plus tan y over 1 minus tan x tan y. Now you can repeat this whole process with the uh, tan x minus y, but I'm just going to say similarly, similarly, dot, 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 tan x minus y is actually going to equal tan x minus tan y divided by 1 plus tan x tan y times tan y. Okay, so there's the compound angle formulas for tan. Now, do you have to remember this? No, you don't have to remember this. On my website, you can download this um, trig identity page, and they are all on there. Um, so it even has the reciprocal identities, although I didn't spell them out. You have to rearrange some of these things. You got the quotient identities. You got some Pythagorean identities. You can use them all as they're written down there. Those are basic trig identities. Related angles and correlated angles, or also known as cofunction, which are the ones that we were talking about previously. Um, and down here is the addition and subtraction formulas, also known as the compound angle formulas. So you can write that down there, aka compound angle formulas. They have some different names. Um, and they're all there. Okay, This has A's and B's instead of X's and Y's. Some of them have thetas instead of A's and B's. Hopefully you um, know the difference or can't tell the difference. Um, you can use this page on tests and exams and assignments. Okay, um, I put it together for that purpose, print it out, use it, keep it, don't write anything else on it because I don't want any other stuff on here, um, but this is your page to use. Now, double angle formulas are also special cases of the compound angle formulas. So we're going to take a look at how to develop the double angle formulas and they're a little bit more straightforward than the one that I just did. So going back to here. Uh, we're going to look at the double angle formulas. Now, the double angle formulas are a special case of the compound angle formulas, except that the two angles that we're talking about are exactly the same. So instead of having x plus x, I'm going to, or instead of having x plus y, I'm going to have x plus x, and see how that simplifies things. Uh, so here we go. For sine, um, sine of 2 theta is simply sine of theta plus theta. Well, this is the addition of two of the same angle. So if we use the compound angle formula, and remember that sine, it's going to be sine, cos, cos, sine. And instead of having an x and y here, these are all thetas. And sine has the same sign as this down in here. So what we have here is sine theta cos theta plus cos theta sine theta. Well, sine theta and co times cos theta is exactly the same as cos theta times sine theta. Because uh, we know that um, multiplication, it doesn't matter what order you multiply it in. Uh, so this is actually just 2 times sine theta cos theta. And there is the double angle formula for sine. Sine of 2 theta, and I'll write this down here, sine of 2 theta equals 2 sine theta cos theta. Now for cosine, cos 2 theta, again, is just the cos of theta plus theta. And I could have used x plus x. I just sometimes like to use theta, sometimes like to use x's and y's. Okay, uh, and remember, cos went cos, 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 sine, sine, uh, and we put our thetas in there, and if there was a plus here, there was a minus here. So, well, how does this simplify? Well, we have cos theta times cos theta is the cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. And this is one of the formulas, cos of 2 theta. But there's a couple other um, 
derivations of it because I know that cos squared is actually 1 minus sine squared. Uh, from And we know it's 1 minus sine squared from the Pythagorean identity. So this actually equals 1 minus sine squared theta minus sine squared theta because of the, we're going to call it Pythagorean theorem or the PTID, Pythagorean theorem identity. Uh, and we can simplify it because now I've got minus sine squared minus sine squared. So this is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So cos of 2 theta is also this because of the Pythagorean identity. So we are going to do that one more time because I can write sine squared theta as 1 minus cos squared theta because of the Pythagorean identity. So we can say that this um, this one here is 1 minus 2 and then sine squared theta can be 1 minus cos squared theta. Okay, so I'm just going to change the sine squared theta into 1 minus cos squared theta by the Pythagorean identity one more time. And that's going to give me 1 minus 2, which is going to be negative 1, and then plus 2 cos squared theta. So it's 2 cos squared theta uh, minus 1. Now moving along for tangent, tangent we know that the tan of 2 theta is going to equal the tan of theta plus theta. And because of the compound angle formula that we just developed, we know that this is going to be tan theta plus tan theta over 1 minus tan theta times tan theta, okay. which if we simplify on the top, if I have tan theta plus tan theta, well that's just two tan thetas. And on the bottom I have a tan theta times a tan theta, so that's just 1 minus tan squared theta. Now that is the development of all of the basic trig identities, tan of 2 theta. These are all on that identity page and you're allowed to use them all. Okay. Now I want to make a couple things clear before we carry on to the basic identities, but I'm going to tell you to take a little break, take a breather, go get something to drink before you watch the next part of the video. Um, so tan, uh, tan squared theta is the same thing as tan theta times tan theta. It is not the same thing as the tan of theta squared. Okay, Those are two different things. This just means the tan of theta times theta in brackets. Okay, So it's important that you know that what those things mean um, when you're doing some of the other stuff. Okay, So have a little bit of a breather come back and we'll do some of the uh, actually proving trig identities.